Good afternoon and welcome. Please stand. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, we rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Jesus, your Son. Where the head has gone before in glory, the body is now called to follow in hope. We make our prayer through Christ, our risen Lord. of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the Apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the Kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. 
While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High and Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. A blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, speak new languages, pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But the apostles went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word through these accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Back in the 1950s, T.S. Eliot wrote a play called The Family Reunion. The play was a commercial flop, but it had a line in it that I've always remembered. One of the characters says this, 
In a world of fugitives, the person taking the opposite direction will appear to be running away. That's a marvelous insight. Eliot was pointing out that most people in our world are running away from reality, running away from commitment, running away from God. And so, as he said, we live in a world of fugitives. And so the individual who bucks the crowd, the person who is in fact running toward God, will be seen by others as a renegade. That's why prophets and saints are so often misunderstood and therefore persecuted because the world perceives them as threats. They march, as Thoreau said, to the beat of a different drummer. So Eliot's line about fugitives suggests that to perceive reality correctly, we have to have an accurate point of view. It's a matter of perception. We might keep that in mind if we want to understand what we are celebrating at this Mass tonight. It's all a matter of your point of view. The readings of this Mass describe the event, the ascension of Jesus, in very graphic and physical terms, as if the Lord literally took off like a guided missile and pierced the clouds. Now, if our point of view is earthly, that looks pretty much like a departure, like the dramatic end of Christ's story, but not so. The scripture writers were just using the only words, the only images that they had to describe a spiritual event. And from the spiritual point of view, the story of Jesus is not here coming to an end, not at all. It's opening up into a new and exciting dimension. So what may look like a departure or a final scene is in fact the beginning of our story. Once the Son of God entered our time, stepped into our space, became one of us, that is forever. <clears throat> Jesus has never left his people. He will never leave his church. The ascension did mark the end of his physical, visible presence among us. But at the same time, it signaled the beginning of his presence in us. At baptism, we became forever connected to Jesus. And so his saving grace has to flow through us in acts of loving, healing service. Jesus has not gone away. He still feeds the poor. He still heals the sick. He still comforts those in grief. He still lights up the world with his love. And he does all of that through you and me, his brothers and sisters the family redeemed by his blood. So it's a matter of perspective. What we are celebrating is not the departure of a loved one or the end of a story, quite the opposite. The risen Jesus still lives and grows and saves. Once again, T.S. Eliot said it quite well, in my end, is my beginning. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true 
God and through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. For in all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified with Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge the living and the dead, and is his kingdom and the way. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess one baptism. Let us pray. Filled with joy by the triumph of our Savior, we offer these petitions. For the Church, may we go into the world and proclaim the Gospel to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in leadership positions, may they use their talents to seek peace for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, for members of the armed forces, for healthcare professionals, and all who risk their own lives for the protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may God grant them healing, strength, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace, and especially for the deceased members of the Pachulo and Drumheller families, whom we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, deepen our faith and restore our joy in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of Christ and yours, and for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the law of His holy church. Father, we gather to celebrate the ascension of Jesus. May we, through this holy exchange, rise up with Him to glory. He is the Lord of life, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty Father, through Jesus your Son. For after his resurrection, he plainly showed himself to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven that we might be sharers in his divinity. And so filled with Easter joy, we sing your praise. <laughs>
consecrate our gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our saving Lord. On the night of his last supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone before us into the fullness of your peace. Have mercy on us all that with the blessed Mother of Jesus, with Joseph, her spouse, and all your apostles and saints, we may inherit eternal life and come to praise you forever through Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word of my soul. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you allow those on earth to celebrate these divine mysteries. Grant that Christian hope may draw us upward to where our nature is united with you. Jesus is Lord, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.